All right, welcome back. We got a uh, Battle of the Kraken Trainer Reblades today. As you can see by the title, we have the Hourglass Kraken, um, the Tanto Reblade. This is on the pink handles at the bottom here. And then a Bowie Kraken Reblade by Phoenix Design on the top here in gunmetal. And then as our kind of base, we have this, which is actually a clone of the um, V3, just the standard trainer by Squid Industries. This is cloned however by Arm Shark, but it gives you a fair visual representation. It's pretty pretty damn close. And obviously we're not really gonna be talking about this much, so it's just kind of a placeholder so you can see and compare it to what it looks like to the original, basically. Yeah. Everything is set up on standard Squid Industries hardware, titanium for both of these. We've got blue on the bottom, pink on the top. Um, standard Squid washers and then True Link extra position bushings for both of them. Everything is from factory, so everything's a fair comparison. Um, just kind of put together straight from factory, um, assembled, and then this is what you get after a bit of lube. For lubricant, we've used some Carbon Honey Thick. My favorite, I think it's pretty much the best bathroom lubricant on the market at the moment, just in terms of sound. There's a, f there's a few other good ones, but uh, personally, I like this. Those are kind of our test conditions, I guess. We're going to do three different categories. We're going to start off, obviously, with the difference in, differences in machining, differences in materials, and kind of the actual manufacturing processes. Then we'll do a little section on the sound and the tolerances, although this is only going to be short. And then uh, we'll do flippability at the end, a little bit of aesthetics, you know, things you might want to consider. So yeah, let's get straight into it. I feel like the best way to do this is to just sit them down side by side and then list off how they're made, pros and cons of each. So. Let's get started. Over on this side, actually, we'll start off with um, we'll start off with Hourglass since they were the first to do this. These guys were the first to make a Kraken trainer. It's pretty cool. Um, obviously, there's a few imperfections. The way they do it is um, questionable, in my opinion, as a product designer. But we'll talk about that. Um, they have, I think it's. 440C stainless steel, it's been hardened, it's water jet cut, and it's um, then surface ground down to 0.125 of an inch, which is the standard thickness for, for most battle song blades. This is good, I mean, it's, it's great for tolerance, it's great for cost, you can buy these things for about, I think it's about 120 US dollars, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're 120 US dollars straight from um, Hourglass. Water jet cutting is not the best. Um, obviously, I'm biased having built a CNC machine blade, um, but I'll talk about the downsides of that as well. Water jet cutting is not the best because it's extremely sharp. What you get around here is he's hand finished it a bit. Obviously, the, blade, uh, the spine is rounded. That's hand done by him, um, by Hourglass himself. But when you get the blade, there are a lot of imperfections. You'll see, I don't know how well I can focus. Around here, you've got like kind of little grooves and gouges. None of the lines are perfectly straight. They're all a little bit jagged. And this is just kind of a byproduct of water jet cutting. You can see there, none of those lines are very perfect. They're all a little bit jaggedy and not quite straight. And, you know, when you're on a budget, that's fine. But I feel like if you're spending an extra 120 US on top of already buying a Kraken, you kind of want it to be, you know, well made. And I'm, I'm not saying they're terribly made. They're good tolerances. They flip well. But um, it's just these little marks and scuffs and all over the blade here you can see um, from the surface grinding. And then also just the fact that the lines and general cutting is quite poor. You can see actually on the blade here where this side's been cut down you actually have an angle there and same on the end if it will focus well. Doesn't really want to focus. 
it's actually not cut straight um, in line like that. It's kind of at, a, at an angle like this, which is just, I found it kind of poor, which is why I didn't want to go with water jet cutting when I built my trainer blades, because I knew that um, hourglass just wasn't enough for me. Really, they're not. When you compare them to something like what you would get from Squid, for instance, I know this is a clone, but it is damn close. You know, you've got all perfect lines. Uh, everything's kind of um, been rounded on all the corners, so you have no sharp edges. You've got nothing that could possibly, like, cut you or nick you. Just all-round, smooth, well-built trainer, you know? All the holes are where they should be and well cut out. Running your hand down here doesn't hurt at all. Whereas with the hourglass blade, you'll find that, you know, the little little nicks will cut, will uh, drag on your skin and things like that. And you can see as well with the machining here, where it's been surface ground, it leaves these awful marks along the blade. So that's what I don't like about the hourglass reblade. However, at the price, it's 120 US. Very cheap for a reblade. You know, you have some rep ones that go on the market for like 100 and, or 230, things like that. Um, so for a reblade, extremely budget, but you know, you kind of see the signs of, of spending on a budget. For the Phoenix Design one, you use, well, it's a, um, I think 4140 alloy steel that's been hardened as well. And then surface ground, similar to the hourglass. Um, but because it's CNC machined, all of your lines are perfect and they're all rounded and chamfered and things like that. So you've got no sharp edges. Um, everything's done to a very fine tolerance. Your surface grinding does leave marks, but there are a lot more uniform you can see here they're all done straight down the bay like that and none of them are like um you can all the dirt around the pivots that's oil when you compare them up against the hourglass blade you can just see kind of how the imperfections stand out on this whereas this is um it has a surface finish done before they get shipped out so that it is, you know, looking all nice and smooth. But yeah, otherwise, same process with hardened. It's just the fact that this is CNC machined. This is water jet cut. This uses a stainless steel and this uses a, an alloy steel. I should briefly mention the downsides of a CNC machine blade. Um, CNC machining, especially in the smaller batch sizes, are... Um, it's a lot more expensive, so you'll see these um, go up on the site for around about 135, 140 US dollars. Um, so about 10, 15, no, 15, yeah, 15, 20 dollars more than the um, hourglass blade that you see over here. Um, batch size as well. These are only made to pre-order, so if you order one, you got to wait a month, then you'll get one, you know? Um, or it's slightly less than a month, actually. I think it's right about 15 days before it gets shipped out. But from ordering to your door, it's probably around about 20 days to a month, give or take, three or four weeks. However, with the Hourglass, um, these are made and then sold in much bigger batch sizes. I mean... They probably only put up 20, 25 on the site at a time, but um, you'll find that uh, they sell out pretty quick. Whereas with the Phoenix Design ones, it's just a pre-order at the first of every single month. Pre-orders open on the 15th, they close. Everyone who ordered in that time gets shipped out a, um, a reblade on the first of the next month. So... If you order it in first, on the 1st of October, you, it'll get shipped out on the 1st of November. If you order on the 15th of October, it'll get shipped out on the 1st of November. Um, yeah, that's just how it's going to work. We're going to switch to a um, kind of a stock system yeah, next year. On After December, after that drop, we'll get these and then store them here. 
instead of actually uh, making them daughter. But yeah, cost-wise, slightly more. Obviously, that's for the better quality. You have to make little, um, I actually don't know what they're called, holders, like ways to hold the blade in the CNC machine. Whereas this is just cut out of a big sheet, this one. So yeah, there's a price difference, um, but that is, you know, uh, offset by the quality difference, in my opinion. Obviously, for others, that might be different. But yeah, I did also want to announce that we're switching this to a uh, um, actual stock with drops. Well, not with drops, sorry. It'll just be a stock on the store that you can buy. Um, that will happen in, in January. But yeah, on to the next half. Now that we've done how they're made, so let's talk about how they've been designed. So obviously, both have been designed in flip with flipping in mind. You've got hourglass over here is a very neutral kind of quiet muted experience. The Phoenix is a little more handle bias, but it's focused, you know, a lot of tip uh, tip weight here, and um, so it's very it's very momentum based. Whereas this being neutral, kind of. Uh, it's easier to maneuver, but doesn't quite have the same flow. I'll do some flipping with both so you can see. First up with Hourglass, and this was probably my favorite Kraken that I owned for a very long time, obviously until I built my own and I could customize it exactly to my preferences. When we talk about flipping, um, I can't say this is better than this because everyone's preference is different. It's kind of the point. Um, and obviously I'll be biased if I do that because I built this one to be exactly my preference. Um, but I can talk to you about how they flip and kind of um, what each one focuses on. So the hourglass is very neutral. Um, I'll insert a picture here of the balance of the two, like balancing on my finger like this. So there you go, that's that. You can see the um, hourglass is ever so slightly more blades, uh, balances ever so slightly more to the blade and the Phoenix is ever so slightly towards the handles. So with Phoenix, you have a slight handle bias, but with all this tip weight here, you can see all the cutouts here and then obviously you have a lot more mass down the ends. Um, that's kind of been done so that everything like your fans are really smooth and will go on forever without pulling. Things like choker fans as well, extremely smooth, backhand fans, all of that. You guys know it's my favourite move, so I had to make it very fanable. But I also kept the handle bias of the original Kraken Trainer and... Kind of, kind, kind of tried to focus it to be like the Tanto Kraken. If anyone's ever flipped a V2.5 Tanto Kraken, that was kind of the goal in terms of balance um, and general weight distribution. But yeah, that's kind of what we were going for. And I feel like it's, it's fairly close. When you flip a Kraken uh, Tanto, it should be relatively similar experience to this trainer here. You can see fans go forever, but still the rollovers are extremely predictable because you have that handle bias that will kind of bring them around and keep that momentum going. Hourglass, on the other hand, will fan amazing because it's so neutral. He says as he drops it, but I do find that the momentum lacks kind of in the... Um, more rollovers and chaplain's tricks. Again, both flip very well, um, and it is down to preference, so you shouldn't make a decision based on that. I like both, but they are a different flipping experience. For sound, you probably heard during flipping that the um, hourglass is very muted. It doesn't have any ringing, nothing like that. Do a quick sound test for you. quite quiet but it does sound good it has a lot of vibration phoenix design 
we have this big long strip here, which does cause some ring. If you like ringy bell songs, I'll give you a quick sound test. Can you hear the ring afterwards? It's quite similar to a real Kraken trainer. Um, obviously, because the design is so inspired by the uh, whole pattern of the original, you'll see that um, it sounds very similar to Flip. Speaking about aesthetics, obviously, the Bowie's been designed based on the... Um, the Tanto trainer that you can buy now. You can see the similarities in the cutouts there, of course. It kind of keeps the same design language. The hourglass goes with the hourglass theme, of course. It's got the hourglasses in, in some other cutout patterns. They do offer an X one. It's a new one. It's got like a an X in the middle, which I quite like. You know, if you can go check that out as well, then I would. If you don't like this design, then that is it's a pretty good looking one. Oh, that hurt. So yeah, um, that's kind of all the differences between the two, how they flip, what they're made out of. I will say, obviously I'm with bias. I built this, um, but the quality, the machining quality, material quality, things like that, is better on the on the Phoenix. That was kind of the one thing I wanted to get out of building my own reblade is just something that's more high quality and felt a bit more premium. Didn't feel like a downgrade from the uh, from the actual trainer when you swap over. So um, that was my main goal with this. This, however, is a little more ringy. Flips a little more handle bias. Still fans all perfectly. I did make sure that. You know, nothing was compromised when we did make the cutout design for this. Um, but if you do like a quiet battle song, the hourglass, probably the best bet, honestly. Um, I will work on some muting stuff for this. You know how Zippy has his inserts. I'll work on something like that for this at some point. But yeah, I guess that's all the information I can get between the two. Hopefully fair comparison. Um, obviously, it's bound to be bias, but um, if you do want to buy one of these, links are in description as always, go follow all the socials and stuff. Yeah, I'll be seeing you.